So let's finish this up by looking at Aztec religion. Um, you had a reading that focused on Aztec mythology. Um, so now we're going to look at some elements of Aztec religion <clears throat> to particularly put it within context of when Christianity comes to the West. Um, a lot of times we find that some of these indigenous beliefs are, are you know, they, at least to us Westerners, we find them to be ridiculous. However, are they more ridiculous than, say, Christian belief systems, right? Um, and unfortunately, we call these stories myths, where, where, whereas Christian stories, we don't call them myths, right? We call them religion. And, um, you know, uh, I always like to kind of mock students, you know, are, are Mesoamerican belief system that different from, say, some guy building you know, some other person from mud, breaking a rib and creating a woman, right? I mean... To some people, they go, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense, Pablo, you know, <laughs> and it's just like, well, I don't know about that. But um, the point really is to show you how every society has a, a creation story and, and creation stories are important because they, they kind of develop the way we, we look at the world. And whereas in Western culture where, you know, uh, if you ever study religion, you know, the Western, uh, particularly how people interpret it. Uh, in Western uh, Christianity, there's this belief that God created Earth for us to to dominate, right? And in Mesoamerica, it, it's so much different. And and I would say even you know um, someone even environmentalist, where the gods created the Earth to sustain us, right? To to give us food, to replenish us, and in doing so, we must respect the Earth too, which is something that. In Christianity you don't really see anymore um, so you see this with a lot of native religions where there's this deep respect for Mother Earth and a lot of it's just because of their belief system because of their religion unlike Western religion which is more about dominating nature right because well God said here it's, it's yours and then we just go and, and destroy it so we see this in the readings that you that you had for this week <clears throat> so this is important because of the way the Aztecs look at the world, right? Um, there's this belief at this time um, that the world was about to come to an end. Uh, and this is very cyclical. You know, they look at the world in very cyclical ways. Whereas, in, again, Western culture, we look at the world in very linear ways. You're born, and then you're just kind of waiting for the finish line, right? <laughs> it's just kind of like a straight line from A to B. Whereas in Mesoamerica, Things come in cycle. Yes, you're going to die, but then it's going to come back. So the, the belief was that the world had already been, uh, had already ended four times already, and that we were going to uh, move into the, the end of the fifth sun. Um, so the indigenous people believed that this was going to happen, and they couldn't stop it, right? Because you can't. Uh, you know, time moves forward. You can't do much about it. But they believed that sacrifice was supposed to kind of prolong the inevitable that yes the world's going to end but maybe we can do something to slow it down which is why sacrifice became so important in Mesoamerican culture. Now understand that in, in Western culture and when the Europeans arrive at this moment they see sacrifice as something barbaric um, but only because they don't quite comprehend the, the worldview of the indigenous people. This was supposed to be something that benefited society, right? Some, it just depends uh, on the situation, but some people did see it as, as an honor to give your life to, to the gods. Remember that video that I showed you with the, um, that needle, the uh, kind of piercing the, 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 the penis, right? Giving your blood to, to the gods. So blood is very important um, in indigenous culture. So, you're trying to to stop the the earth from ending and this is why you have um you know the, 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 as we get closer to 1519 which is again the year that the spanish arrived but also the year that the world was supposed to end <clears throat> um there's this this kind of um uh, rapid movement to to try to stop the inevitable and sacrifice increases from that point forward and Again, I want you to, to understand that the indigenous people saw the earth as a nurturer, right? And I've already mentioned this, but that the gods gave their blood to create the world. 
therefore we must give something sacred to um to to the world and to the gods right and a lot of times it was the, the heart um and the reason is and, and most religious kind of do this right the earth itself is very a very insecure place particularly at this time well maybe even today right <laughs> with everything that's going on uh we were all happy you know seven months ago we thought um things were looking great and then you know things took a downturn for the worse and some people made it worse than it should have been but you know here we are right? uh, i don't know if we should be giving our blood or sacrificing ourselves or something but uh you know uh again there's just a lot of correlation here right that the world is just a very insecure place you just don't know what's going to happen so in at least in the indigenous beliefs that the gods are controlling these strings so when you did get sacrificed, you were seen as a messenger, right? You were taking uh, information to the gods to hopefully help and spare the people here on earth. And particularly when warriors were sacrificed or when warriors died during, during battle, this was a very positive thing because they went to a paradise where, you know, things were um, perfect, like any other heaven, right? They, they got to, um, uh, they changed their bodies into hummingbirds. And they got to this world that was a paradise where they can feast on flowers for the rest of their, their lives up there in the heavens. So death wasn't something to, to fear, but, you know, just something that would happen. Uh, again, it's inevitable. You're going to die. Whether you like it or not, you are going to die. So this provides an afterlife that is somewhat positive. Uh, again, in Western culture, we... We, we um, try to stop that as much as possible and, you know, stop aging as much as possible too, right? Plastic surgery and all that good stuff. Um, in Mexico, it is said that we dance with death, right? That we, we welcome death. We invite them to, for dinner, if you will, um, because the death is all around us and, and it's just part of our, our, of our life. <clears throat> so what do we learn? Number one, um, in this overall lecture, right? Not just this, this section of the video, but the entire video or the entire series of, of lectures, we learned that Chicano history kind of connects our current contemporary life with indigenous life. And this is very significant because throughout history, we have been told that indigenous people were barbarians, and indigenous people were inferior, um, right? That they were crazy and that they were backwards. And for many Chicanos, you know, they, they felt insulted by this. So in the 1960s, they dig into their past. They, they search their history and they find quite the opposite. As I showed you, Tennessee Plan, 250,000 people compared to Europe only having less than 100,000. The Mayans doing brain surgery, doing um, astro, uh, astronomy, you know, developing the concept of zero where the Europeans are, you know, couldn't even tell the concept of time quite yet, right? Uh, during the same time that they're doing this this great work. Um, so for Chicanos, it, it, indigenous history is not something negative, but something to be proud of. And, you know, it wasn't aliens who came down and helped these people. You know, they did it on, the, on, on their own. Indigenous people did not need help from anybody. Uh, and this reiterates my point again, right, that indigenous civilization was highly civilized, uh, probably much more so than the Europeans that at the same time, right? <clears throat> and lastly, we see that it challenges, um, particularly when we look at Aztec culture and, and the end of the, uh, the uh, fifth sun, uh, it challenges this idea that life is linear. And in Western culture, we, we look at life in a very linear format. And um, in indigenous culture, no, life is cyclical, right? The world gives you stuff and then you return. You got to be good to it because it's going to provide for you and so forth. Um, in, in Western culture, we, we don't quite have that perspective, uh, rather a much more linear perspective. So we, we take as much as we can get, I guess. Um, so we're going to end it there. Um, so this is part of our indigenous past. Um, just try to highlight a few kind of major points and kind of challenge that perspective that these people were not civilized, which I don't know why that I still have to do this, but you know, we still have to kind of challenge that perspective because it's still there maybe more so today than, than what it used to be, and um, show you some of the great things that the indigenous people in the Americas accomplish. And, and again, for many Chicanos, this is part of our, 
of our heritage, of our, of our history. Uh, the next lecture will focus more on the other side. Um, yes, we're indigenous, but we're also European, right? Many of us, we come in different shades as Mexican-Americans, as mestizos. So we, we have to kind of acknowledge that, that racial mixing. Now, it's not a pretty mixing. Um, it's not a mixing that comes out of love, if you will. <laughs> it actually comes out from a very horrific history, but it's a mixing nonetheless. So we're going to talk about our, our European past in the next week.